Charlie Burrow Constant Order. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Present. Mr. Ross? Here. Mr. Pamplona? Here. Mr. Priya? Here. And Ms. Siegel Morris? Here. With five members present, we have a quorum, and we are also joined by Mayor Harding this evening. Our first item is community announcements. Would any member of council like to make an announcement for the public? Uh, and the same offer to the public? Any? Yes? I just wanted to let uh, everybody know if you haven't seen it on social media um, that um, uh, Friends of Lake Afton is having a boot ride fundraiser at the lake um, Saturday, May 14th from 12 to 4. And for a $10 donation, of course, if you like to donate more, that would be wonderful. For a $10 donation, you can have a boat ride. We have canoes and pedal boots. And um, also, under the boot tent, we will be selling items pertaining to Yardley, Lake Afton, or Friends of Lake Afton. All the proceeds from the boat rides and the sales go to Friends of Lake Afton to take care of Lake Afton. For those who don't know, I just thought I'd kind of throw that in there that um, if people in the audience or out in at home, don't know what FOLA is, Friends of Lake Afton. We are a nonprofit organization that's been taking care of Lake Afton for 53 years for the enjoyment of all the public and for the benefit of the wildlife. And um, also, um, the magnets for a car and license plates that say, I break for ducks in Yardley, are also available at the Earl Hall. And your office of downstairs. So, and uh, $5 for a magnet and $10 for a license plate for anyone interested. And, and what's the date of the fundraiser? I'm sorry. May 14th. Oh. That's a Saturday. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements this evening? Okay. Hearing none, I'll move on to public comments. This is the portion of the meeting during which members of the public may address council regarding items that do not appear on the agenda. If you wish to address council regarding an item that does appear on the agenda, you will be given the opportunity to do so during council's deliberation of that item. Members of the public are asked to please come to our front microphone, state your name and address for the record, and keep comments to three minutes in length, please. Are there any public comments this evening? Yes. Albert Salini, 18 Van Horn Avenue, Charlie Brown. Good evening. Um, two things. First off, I want to thank Paula for sending us an update late this afternoon about the uh, status of the plantings uh, ML7 on the rear of our property along Silver Creek. I'm happy to see progress and the speed that's happening there. Um, the thing I am concerned about for the Greater Council is, while we're seeing movement there, we have, there was no mention of the, uh, the long-term remediation of the, the water flow, uh, which is, is still coming down on the second, uh, on the eastern part of my property is moving east, right? So there's nothing there. So I don't know if the engineer's report tonight will cover that, um, but I, I would like to, to hear the status of that activity, of that remediation, um, if it's possible from the council. Second thing before I let you start, I just want to advise the council that uh, on all matters regarding ML7 and Silver Creek, please do not send any information to uh, Russell Sacco. He is no longer our council. We're interviewing other councils. So it should be directed to me. You can leave him off of the emails. So it's my first. I can give it now if you would like. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, on Friday, that was a second part of our discussion was assistance in uh, listening to ML7 and their engineer 
on what they're going to do uh, regarding the remediation of the discharge after the swale construction. And we, we spoke about uh, the solution for that, but we also went out to the site after our meeting and we discussed it. And so under the direction, we'll, we'll be forthcoming receiving information from ML7 so that we can share that with you as well. But what the plan is, is to remove the, you could say the debris within that area and install additional stone down down the hill and they're hoping to install larger stone at the bottom of the hill and they talked about some plantings as well and so those that was going to be the the, the short term and the long term solution at this point is to is to remediate that rill that is there you know that's formed in that area this the second gorge that is that has right that, that, so that that's, area, that's great location, location. Thank you, Patrick. Yes. I'm sorry for interrupting, but so what about the water flow, the, the remediating water flow? What will happen to that? Well, that the 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 part of that construction, Rich Crassel also wants to be on site while that is working. That is ongoing too, just to let you know. So, by installing the stone, will assist with slowing the the, the flow of water to get down to that hill. At this point is that hill is discharging, I mean the water is discharging at the end of this hill, at the end of the swale, on top of the hill, and going down, gathering speed. So with the installation of the stone, they're looking at remediating the velocity of the, of the water coming down to mitigate that erosion. Okay, so what, what we did request was information so we could forward it over to you. All right, and when did they anticipate to, to do that activity? Well, they are getting back to us. They have to check with their contractor and, and line that information up. So our first step was to talk about the landscaping, additional species, whips, species of whips, and give them authorization to get those, um, those cypresses as well. So we'll be uh, reaching back out to ML7 for a bit more time. So it is the borough's engineer's uh, conclusion that the water flow uh, is acceptable for it to not move further east, but rather come down the hill at that point with at a slower pace. Correct. So, okay, so it means my property, Jonathan, will be getting the bulk of the water, yours won't. Um, I guess good for you. Uh, but we'll have to see if that, is, if that works. Um, okay, thank you for the briefing on that matter. I yield my time or if I have any more. <laughs> This is how the permits are through DEP as well. And the engineer prepared those. They were reviewed by the DEP as well as the, the borough. And this was following the pre-existing patterns. The responsibility of the engineer, of the, of the applicant, is to not to have an increase of flow and velocity, increase of rate, as, it, as well as increase mm -hmm. of, of volume. Sure. And so, what they're, this was the existing predetermined pattern of this location. 
And what you can do is have a follow-up conversation with, with Rich Press and the people. So how, so, so again, I'm, I'm all about next steps because we're not getting anywhere here. How do we facilitate that? And how do we find him? That was not the pre-existing flow of water. Or creek that, like, like, come on guys, that's not the pre-existing flow of water. Three years ago, that was not the pre-existing flow of water. ML7 did that, and now it's the pre-existing flow of water. We didn't do that. It's our property that's being damaged. How do we facilitate a conversation to find ML7 and to have a conversation with Rich so that we can stop the damage? Uh, I'm, I'm just, please. Well, we've already fined ML7 for twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, and that was yeah. for from DEP, correct? Yeah. From the, yeah. Yeah, we don't really camera. have a structure in place to to find them like consistently over and over again. We, so, so what what facilitated that fine? That was from the county concert, yeah. as I understand. That's right, right. right. Patrick. And so it, well, they it, have more authority in these matters than the borough, quite frankly. So that's the, that's the entity that facilitated that fine. There's probably a question is whether or not the borough is the best venue for some of these discussions because there's overlapping authorities, you know, and certainly whether or not you have some sort of other legal claim against ML7 may not involve the borough at all. Um, or, so, may. or may. Or may. May or may not involve yeah. the borough. Um, but this is the venue. This is, this is the property. It's in the borough. This is the venue. I'm sorry to speak with Jonathan. But this is the appropriate. You, there are other authorities oh, guys. that we're happy to deal with. Punt here. Come on. I mean, we're not punting. We've literally spent hundreds of hours um, between all of us. So have we. And I understand we that. But this is our property. We didn't do. We had no authority. Like we didn't have anything to do with the decision that was made. Yeah, but and it's impacting our property. I absolutely so your time, understand. With all due respect, we've all spent. I don't even know how many hours on this. As of you. And we're not, it one, not a single time has any of us been like, it's not our problem. We're really working towards a goal. We appreciate you, can, you can only do so much. We, we do all the, the reviews and we submit it. We have to wait back and we give them deadlines now to hear back. And then we go back and forth and it's just, this is, this well, is well, the process. One final question and then I'll sit down. Has anyone, can anyone get Jeffrey Siegel's contact information? Paula, can you get me Jeffrey Siegel's contact information? I think we have his email. Okay. And he's on a lot of the emails I got as well. So I, I don't believe so. That's, that's Tyler? If we have it, yeah, we will get yeah. it to you. I'll, I'll make sure of that. That's fine. Are there any? Yes. Also, Public Works. I'm sorry, just one second. Public Works. We discussed this like almost the entire public works meeting. You're free to come to that. That is uh, at 6.30 it, before the next council meeting. So it's the second council meeting of the month always. And we've been talking about this in every public works meeting for months, Great. trying to move this forward. You know, so you're, you're welcome to, to join every one of those meetings and have the discussion with us every single time. Now we've now completed seven years uh, since construction has begun, and we got 140 plus residents up there getting very anxious because the developer has not finished to task the task of one of paving at the end. Um, last year, good progress was made on getting a checklist ready and punch list ready, and some progress was made in the fall. Um, but then, uh, apparently, hit a, a roadblock when some pipes underneath underground. Um, when they did video inspections, which were required, revealed so that some pipes were broken. And uh, the thing that gets touchy here is the developer will, has refused to communicate with the homeowners association because their only deal is with through the engineering with the borough, which I understand. But all we're asking is that we, what the status is, and push it forward, because our understanding was that uh, the developer wanted to get away with lining the pipes and not digging up and fixing them the right way. We are very concerned about that because we have noticed many little sinkholes and 
they're pushing back, my understanding, they're pushing back hard on wanting to line the pipes as a solution. But your video camera doesn't see the damage done underneath, and it's been going on for two years, they've been broken. We're very concerned the way they open up. Yeah. There's going to be, and I think that's why they're pushing the, vine, yeah. the, the lining. So whatever we can do, engineering wise, you know, to kind of force their action on it, maybe we're going to comment on it later. But um, one, we want to do it right, and number two, we want to get going on it. So that's our that's our, our, our concern. Thank you. Yeah. And one other question, on a positive note, uh, we'd like to thank uh, the uh, chief and his his men did a very good job with. Uh, taking care of issues at our back dam over the weekend where kids were going up there and it was well received on the approach that your officers took, very professional and I think uh, we would really be successful in, in that matter. Thank you, sir. Yeah. We affirm that this year. I know it's getting more mountains. But yeah. But, but it's starting off with a, a good approach at the beginning, I think will work. Thank okay. you. All right. There are any additional public comments this evening? Once, going twice, we'll close public comments. Next item on the uh, agenda is consideration of the, con the consent <coughs> agenda for today, May 3rd. We have a number of items. Approval of the minutes of, for the April 19th meeting. Approval of the bills list for today, May 3rd. A certificate of appropriateness for 2209 for Stonewall at 125 South Main Street. And an event permit for a Sunday concert in the park, sponsored by Experience Yardley and to be held in Buttonwood Square on June 19th, July 17th, and August 21st, weather permitting. Would any member of council like for an item to be considered separately from the consent agenda? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? <coughs> so moved. Second. Uh, it's a motion made by Mr. Ross and seconded by Mr. Campalone. Are there any comments from council? Any comments from the public? All those in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries five to zero. Uh, next on the agenda is a report from our chief of police. Thank you, ma'am. Um, only one item tonight, and that is our monthly service statistics for April 2022. We handled 536 calls for service, issued four parking tickets issued 76 moving traffic citations, investigated nine motor vehicle accidents, and made three arrests, two of which were for DUI. And that concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Those uh, elevation products. 
projects. I'll make the motion for that. I go second. Okay, the motion was made by Mr. Ross, seconded by Mr. Freya. Um, are there any comments or questions from council? Any comments or questions from the public? Uh, can you give me those addresses again? Yes, they were at 33 Brown Street, 46 Brown Street, and 81 North Delaware. Chris, well, sorry, I, I was just saying, because they're the ones in the packet. Um, yeah. They say finalizing bid package in the description. Okay, all those in favor of advertising free elevation properties, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries 5 to 0. Yeah. Sure. Uh, <laughs> project updates, uh, North Main Street, phase two, uh, the project is out to bid, and uh, we're scheduled on May 10th to do the bid opening uh, in in the Remington Burnick Library office, and Paula will be in attendance for that bid opening. For uh, the phase three project, uh, we completed a concept design and we're scheduling for uh, the 17th during the public works uh, project to present that uh, to the public. And we'll have a uh, presentation board and go through the concept for that uh, project so we can move forward with our permitting uh, phase for that project. For Mary Yardley Bridge, we are uh, still waiting comments uh, from DEP for permitting. Um, however, we are uh, working on finalizing our bid package as well, uh, but we're just still waiting for the permits for that project. And I'll be responding back to DCNR's comments too uh, that we did receive. Uh, Pico property, there's no updates regarding the status of our uh, request, our grant request. But I'll uh, provide an update during public works on what we might be able to your word back from that project. And that concludes my project updates. Thank you very much. Mr. Klosser? Uh, thank you, but I have no report this evening. Thank you. Mayor Harding? Thank you. Just a quick report. So tomorrow is May 4th, which makes it carry the load day here in Yardley Borough. Uh, take this opportunity to thank in advance the people who don't always get the recognition. So Paula, Wes, and Chief, thank you for kind of doing all the stuff behind the scenes. They do a lot of work and then we just walk through and run away and leave them with the cleanup. So thank you for that. I want to make sure I do express that. Um, if anyone wants to be involved, you're welcome to join us at 1.30 at the Washington Crossing Visitor Center parking lot. If you'd like to do that segment of the walk, it's a four mile walk from Washington Crossing to here in Yardley Borough. If you want to join us starting in Yardley Borough, three o'clock is the beginning of the rally uh, where we welcome the walkers coming in from Washington Crossing and then have a couple quick speeches and some photographs and then cheer them on as they head out at 3.30 p.m. to make their way to Newtown and then ultimately Texas, but we will not be going that far. Um, <laughs> if anyone wants to join us for the official entire Yardley Borough sponsored segment, it will be from Washington Crossing at 1.30 and you will end at the Feasterville Trevos Firehouse at about 9 p.m. at night. It's about an 18 mile walk, uh, definitely doable. There's not a, you know, you don't have to be a training or anything like that. Um, the last segment is the hardest. There are some serious mountains somewhere on Brownsburg Road or something like that, but uh, it's a good time. So hopefully we get a lot of people join us, but most importantly, three o'clock at the monument, if you can make that tomorrow, just to cheer everybody on, that would be huge. Um, also, I'm excited to say that I think tomorrow we will be able to present Carry the Load with the largest check that we have ever been able to present them in the past 10 or 11 years that we've been working with them. So thank you to our great sponsors. Uh, and then as a little parting gift uh, for everyone at the table tonight on your way out, stop by. Uh, and we have t-shirts that are being sponsored this year by a Soldier's Hands, which is a local organization. Uh, they are kind of our official sponsor that we're working with this year for the t-shirts. So we've got one for everybody at the table. So hopefully if you can make it, you can wear it. And if you can't, you can wear it in spirit. So tomorrow's a big day. It's a good organization. 
we have a long history with them, almost as long as they've been in existence, and it's something that I hope continues for years and years and years in the future. But tomorrow's the day. So hopefully we see you all. That's my report. Thank you. We'll now move on to council member reports, beginning with Mr. Ross. Uh, no report. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Curtin? No report. Mr. Campbellone? Um, so uh, community outreach was not able to meet tonight, but one of my goals is to fill some of the vacancies we have on open committees. We have vacancies on the EAC, the Environmental Action Committee. Um, so I encourage anybody with a passion or a background in environmental science to please uh, apply. Um, you can get the application from Manager Johnson. We also have a lot of vacancies on the Human Relations Commission. This is an important commission. Uh, so I would say that we definitely need some volunteers and really the, the qualifications is, is a passion for diversity, equity, and inclusion in the community. Um, so I would really encourage anyone um, who, who meets that to, to please apply um, and I encourage you to do so. Uh, but that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Mr. Brand? No items today. And I also have no items today. Moving on to discussion items, we have two items listed for discussion this evening. The first regarding a code petition um, or asking of a code petition by council of a petition for review of the FAA's decision to issue a finding of no significant impact for Ponzi regarding the expansion of the Trident Mercer Airport. And I believe Mr. Wayne is here to discuss that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Can you come on up? So, yes. Uh, the Twain, 115 years ago, um, on March 21st, the FAA issued a FOSI, which is basically an approval of the extension. Uh, it's a clean toughening of the capacity of the airport. There are new runways, there's a queue runway. Uh, this will have a major impact on at least three neighborhoods in the park. Uh, we are simply asking that uh, we are the environment joining as a co petitioner for this essentially is an appeal. Ponzi. Uh, it will be filed in the third appeal circuit in Philadelphia um, by an attorney who has experience um, in this, these matters in aviation law. I uh, gave his bio to a solicitor. He can review it. Um, David Trulove and Lil Nickfield have uh, spoken with the gentleman and got a feel for the case. So if you have any questions, he can probably answer them. Okay. Um, there is no financial obligation to borrow. This appeal is being funded by a private citizen and trying to find these guys. Uh, all right, then I to get discussion rolling, I'll make the motion that Yardley Borough enter as a co petitioner uh, for the petition against uh, to appeal the Fonzi of the Trent Mercer Airport. Second. By Mr. Bria and seconded by Mr. Ross. Are there any comments or questions from council? Uh, yeah, Mr. Wayne, can you can you tell us a little bit about what your concerns are? Obviously, with quintupling the size of the airport, primarily, what do you see as as the biggest impacts to the residents of Yardley Borough? Well, noise at the worst times of day with the new Q runway, they'll be able to concentrate flights early in the morning or late at night, which they can't do now. Um, there are more than quadruple in the passenger terminal, and the absurdity of the approval is they're saying we're going to add all this capacity, but we don't expect traffic. We don't expect to use it. Um, if a business came to you and said we're going to quadruple our capacity, but we're not going to use it, so you don't need to give us, we don't need to provide more parking spaces, we'd say that's crazy. That's essentially what the FAA did here. Um, and the good news is that this attorney has done this before. He's appealed these things. He has experience with it. And what is a Q runway? It's like a waiting runway. Okay. It's not the new oh. runway. It allows you to turn the gates faster. Okay. Exactly. Um, has Lower Makefield signed on, or are we presenting to them in the future? They are being presented, I believe, tomorrow and again in two weeks. Okay. Um, I know that a lot of history of the expansion here and chasing after, it's been multiple findings of no significant impact now, but have focused on that idea of segmentation. 
it, are we following the same argument here? Do we sort of expect that this is the last segment, so this is the last chance? Where are we in the, the bigger scope? This is a pretty narrow appeal. Um, the attorney is going to be looking at the actual fancy for there's certain technical things that he can attack, and he's going to be very specific on this. Again, his, his goal is to show the absurdity of it and to delay it as long as possible. But yes, you do make a, a correct point that segmentations happen. There has never been a full, real environmental impact study done at all. Yeah, I think is the real issue is that we've done this in pieces, and each piece alone maybe is okay or somewhat okay, but as a whole, we've, we've maybe triggered some stricter requirements, at least <laughs> clearly right, some of the community believes, but not the FAA at this point. Well, and David or Rich, who, I mean, what would that be? What would be the, for that, that's an FAA decision as to whether or not an environmental impact study needs to be done, or what would be the, like, the well, mechanism to? This is our last chance to fight. This is it. The <laughs> um, fancy is kind of the death now. Rich, what is the timing of the uh, petition filing? They need to file by the 20th, based on the time since the initial filing. 20th of May? Yes. That's why we're asking for to give them time to adjust. Are there any uh, more questions or comments from Council? Uh, last question. Do you know what their timing is to begin the expansion? Have they announced that? I assume as soon as possible. That's why we have one okay. Are there any questions or comments from the public? <clears throat> Hearing that, I'll call the question. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm sorry. Please, Hi, please uh, come. I'm Donald Cox, 81, North Delaware Avenue. Um, yeah, the planes fly directly over my house. Um, and I just, I think this is an important thing for us to do, our last opportunity. Uh, clearly, they're talking about ex expansion. Clearly, they're talking about a significant increase in traffic. There's already another airline uh, that has been landing. Uh, at Trenton that is not publicizing flights yet, but they clearly have an interest in doing that. Um, the airport has got a $100,000 budget to, to uh, publicize their availability to other airlines to try to encourage more airlines to come. Um, the amount of traffic that we see right now in Yardley is only going to increase. Um, right now, the traffic patterns, they can pretty much, when they're departing the airport, fly over any part of Yardley. Yesterday, I was walking down the, the towpath near my home, and I had on uh, noise-canceling headphones and was listening to a podcast, and one of the Frontier planes at 3 o'clock just happened to, was landing and wasn't even taking off. I couldn't hear my podcast. And it felt like I could reach up and touch the plane. It was so low, you know, it was, it was ridiculous. And just imagine that across Yardley, you know, two, three times as many planes in the morning, in the evening, concentrated, because then they're gonna, that's when they're going to come. Uh, it's, uh, I think, a matter of significant concern to the, to the borough, certainly to homeowners' uh, property values, and I would ask you to support this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Are there, yes. So Al Chulini, the key Van Horn, I would uh, acknowledge the council and seriously consider to pass this motion and to do everything it can to support this expansion, even though we may lose in the end, but we need to, because it will be a significant uh, you know, decline in the quality of life and property values of this community. Thank you. Any additional comments? Okay, hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of signing the co-petition, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Our second item of discussion this evening is regarding the preservation of the structure located at 85 West Afton Avenue. Caroline, uh, or Ms. Thompson, pardon me, uh, drafted this letter asking that the builders, um, 
take uh, one of several possible steps to uh, preserve the structure, either by rehabilitating the center stone masonry work and adding new construction around it, or um, preparing measured architectural drawings and photos as a historical documentation of the structure to be kept here and at the Historical Association. And if the building, or if the building must be demolished to work with local officials to determine if the stone, windows, flooring, et cetera, can be used for historical preservation projects uh, in the county. And uh, she's dropped a letter. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure if this is just meant for council or for members of the public to sign as well. Uh, as I understand it, it was uh, to be offered for anyone to sign, uh, especially council members. Uh, you know, in your individual capacities, this wouldn't be necessarily from the council okay. itself. So we're not voting on uh, I guess we could, if we wanted Jane, to want approve it as a council, we could take the vote, and that may have a little more weight to it. Um, agree. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll make the motion that um, council, in its official capacity, sign this letter addressed to EDW builders <laughs> in regards to the uh, Park Period 85 West Afton Avenue. I'll second. Are there any other questions or comments regarding this from Council? Yeah. Can we just go through the background for everybody? I mean, you know, this, I think that's important to what, okay. what we're trying to accomplish. So in the letter it says that um, this property at um, the structure at 85 West Avenue, West Afton Avenue has stood um, since the um, in, in that spot for over 300 years, and the center stone masonry was completed in the late 1600s. The portion of the house nearest to Afton Avenue was built around 1815, and finally, the part of the house furthest away from Afton Avenue is believed to have been attached an attached barn that was eventually converted into a kitchen. Um, the structure is has never been registered as an historic property, and it does not sit within the borough's historic district, um, but we are concerned about uh, preserving the structure and the history of the building deserves to be respected. And um, I think the plan had been to preserve the building, but somewhere along the line, the, um, they changed their, their minds and are now um, looking to, to demolish it. Thank you. I just want to remark too that many of us know this is the Cadwallader House. Our Cadwallader's lived for many, many years. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask Councilman Bree to amend his motion to add the mayor's signature to it. All right. I'll uh, I'll make that. <laughs> I'll take that amendment. Sure. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the public? Okay. I'll call the question. All those in favor of signing the letter, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any abstentions? Motion pass passes five to zero. Thank you. And I think that actually concludes our. Oh. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. I have to apologize. Sorry. I apologize. I forgot to include Patty in my early thank yous also. She does work on kind of <laughs> <laughs> I saw her giving me the evil eye straight. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we have any other business to discuss, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. And second. Okay, then the meeting adjourned. Got the walk shoes on there, Mr. Mayor. Getting ready, sir. I can do 18 miles. 18 miles in a heartbeat, huh? You put a pack, full pack on there. Full pack. Doesn't it? Yours? Now? Uh, we have to find